I did not give Julie that book, Sam. I walked in and she was reading it. Well, what was it doing lying around? She left it right there. Hi, everybody. Bye, everybody. Brenda, come in here. Talk to us. We never see you anymore. You just breeze in and out. Come in. Tell us how you are. I would love to, Daddy, dear, but I've got to go upstairs and change. Wally's waiting outside for me. We're late as it is already. Late for what? Dinner at the McCandless's, Mother. Hold on a minute, Julie. You mean this whole terrible revelation is based on a novel written by Paula Denning? She would call it a novel. It's hardly fiction. From what I saw, it's a 400-page saga based on the Clegg family. And if it's not true, then why did my mom and dad protest so much? You should have seen their faces when they found out I had read part of it. They were upset, and I can understand why. I'm still in shock. You still haven't told me what Paula put in her book that was so damaging. The last chapter is called The Blackmail, and it tells how my father blackmailed Senator Harrington into winning the election for Trey. She actually wrote that? Oh, yeah. The first chapter. Changed the name. I bet every word of it is true. This is very heavy stuff, Julie. I'm just trying to figure out exactly what to do with it. Well, obviously, the first thing we have to do is get our hands on that book. What's the matter? Am I too early? Well, no, not at all. In fact, you're right on time. I'm glad you came, Mr. Morgan. I must confess, I was a little afraid that you might back out at the last minute. When I make a commitment, Mrs. McCandless, I never back out of it. You know, I'm beginning to believe you. Yeah, these are for you. Well, it's time for a little liquid refreshment. What do you have, Mr. Morgan? Scotch and water. Scotch and water. No? I like the you call it, Doug. Uh, a little white wine would be okay. Oh, I'll be glad when I can go out without a keeper. <laughs> you heard him. I'll have one too, Dad. White wine it is. I'll open a fresh bottle. Well, and how are you feeling, Mr. Morgan, after your ordeal? And Oops, I have to go. I'll be right back. I'm going to put these in water. Excuse me. So what do you think? Since I've been in a house like this. To Clarissa, all my love, now and forever. Back. That was my dad. so I thought I'd come down here and check out the action. Yeah, you want to play or something? No, just watch it. Tonight we're spending our money on food, no chips. Not a bad idea. Well, where's Wally? Did him and uh, Brenda fix things up? Uh, yeah, they went to uh, Washington for some family dinner or something. Oh, good. Bumper's not here tonight either. Who's mine in the store? Uh, you're looking at <laughs> the Big responsibility? You said it. Especially with that lady right over there on Winning Street that could break the bank. Very popular. Yeah, and rich, too. By us. She's the biggest better I've seen since I started working here. Oh, really? How much does she want? It's too much. I think she's broken the house limit. Well, better see you can lose a hand once in a while. But you quit while you're ahead. Can't do that. It goes against my personal rule. Which is? Lose a hand, double the bet. See? Hello, Spike. Clegg? Hi. Ready? Go. Hey, not so fast, kitten. Come in, Wally. Have a drink. Tell us 
how things are going at the casino. Daddy, we can't worry later. Uh, uh, Brenda, I refuse to have this house used as just a changing room for you. Now, we have a lot of things to discuss, Mother, darling. Mother, we I have can... time to do all of that, okay? Wally and I are staying in town, so we can all get together tomorrow and make our new wedding plan. Good night. Already. I would like to talk to you, sir. Not now, Wallace. Come on. Sam, you keep telling me that you have a plan to keep that wedding from ever happening. That's right, Mother. Yes, well, I would like to hear exactly what it is right now and in detail. And I will listen. So, how are you feeling, Mr. Morgan? In the pink. Really? I'm a little worried about you today. Oh, were you? It's kind of dark. That was really rather sudden. <laughs> No, I was afraid that this dinner might be a little too soon after that grilling therapy session today. I survived. Well, I'm proud of you. You were. Yeah. It took a lot of courage to drag yourself away from that bar today. I couldn't agree with you more, Thomas. You know, if I'd known how agonizing it was going to be with you, I would never have been... <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear that, Doc? Agonizing. I'll tell you, if, uh, if I'd known how agonizing it was going to be, I never would have let them put me up there. I say something. No, nothing. I just have never heard you laugh outright before. I... How about one of these? I'll say yes. They're fabulous. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Well, here we go. I opened a special bottle of Chardonnay for this occasion. Mr. Morgan. You. Here, uh, Clarissa. Now. I'd like to propose a toast to Jared Morgan to your continued and remarkable success. Here, here. Now, I'd like to make a toast to the whiz kid of orthopedic medicine, my good doctor, Tom. Ah, and here's our other guest of honor. Yes. I'm sorry, it took so long to get here, but Allison took her time getting dressed. That's yeah, quite all right. You got a, you got a kiss for your great grandpa. Mm -hmm. well, hello, Morgan. Hello. I didn't know you were going to be here. Well, I hope it won't spoil your evening, Captain. Why should it? Hello, Julie. Can I have a chair? Hello. Thank you. Mr. Morgan. I would like you to meet my new, beautiful granddaughter, Allison Clegg McCandless. <laughs> Instead of trying... Mr. Morgan, I never did uh, thank you properly for those fingerprints you gave me the other day. I suppose at the time I was uh, too surprised to remember my manners. Uh, forget it, Captain. Are you starting to feel a little guilty now that you finally realize that I am not, nor have I ever been, Victor Markham? Oh, no, I do it all the same, given the leads I had. You know, that's my job, following leads. Well, does that mean at least that you've taken your eagle eye off me? But no, there's still too many unanswered questions about you for me to draw my investigation. For instance, I still don't know your real name. I heard Victor Markham's name mentioned. You were a friend of his, weren't you, Mr. Morgan? I knew him. Yeah, well, I gathered. I mean, well enough to go to his daughter's wedding. Zed Diamond told me that. Yes, I was at his wedding. Well, then you must have been good friends. I didn't realize that I was invited over here to talk about Victor Marco. No, you weren't. Now, there are going to be no interrogations tonight, Tyler. Mr. Morgan is our guest of honor. He's had a difficult day. I want him to relax and have a good time. Try to this time and tell me what you think. <laughs> okay. Delicious. Mm. Could I possibly persuade you to stop calling me Mr. Morgan? At least outside the hospital? Well, of course. Share it. Hello? 
What in the morning can use it all day? So, what do you want to talk to me about? I just want a progress report on the money that you borrowed from me. I assume I'll get it all back. Ever since. Sometime this century. I am working on it, Thomas. Believe me. Stop, Wally. Come on. Cool down. Sit. I'm worried about you. Well, don't be. I'm fine. You know, while I've been watching you all night, and underneath all the laughs and the jollies, I can see that something's bothering you. Now, do you want to talk to me about it? There is nothing to talk about, really. Okay, well, then I'll just ask you straight. Are you still gambling? No. Wally, look at me and say that. <laughs> all right, I had a few games. But I'm on the right track, Thomas. I'm winning now. Fine. Then why can't you pay me back some of the money? Why can't you change the record, Thomas? I said I'm working on it. Now listen to me, Wally. I went out on a limb for you. And I'm willing to keep doing that, but you got to level with me. Now you owed and you still owe. You're into me for 3500 bucks. How much more? It doesn't matter. Yeah, it does matter. All right. So I'm in some trouble. I can handle it. Well, I, I'm willing to keep supporting you on this, but you gotta level with me before you get any deeper. I appreciate your offer, Thomas. Honest, I do. But there's nothing you can do. Is that make sure that no one in this family knows about it, especially Mom. Well, you all love you. There you are. I've been looking all over for you. Hi. What's going on? I really need to talk to you. It's very important. Oh, listen, the McCandlesses, all of them really are the most warm, loving family I've ever known. And you're certainly not prejudiced. Why, because of Wally? No, uh uh. I have known the McCandless family practically all of my life, and I've always felt that way about them. They're the kind of people that they're always there when you need them, you know? They're, they're just like family to me. I mean, I love my parents, but if something was ever really bothering me, I'd probably go to Clarissa. Quite an endorsement. Do you have family? Oh, uh, sure, of course. Doesn't everybody? I mean, but do you have children? <clears throat> Mr. Morgan, uh, what's the matter? Oh, that's nothing. I'm just a, a little tired tonight. Oh, How's my patient doing? Oh, Thomas, this is kind of my fault. I was talking this man's ear off about what a great family you all oh, are. No, no, it was nothing <laughs> of the kind. It's just that I've had a very long, hard day. I think it's about time I start heading back for my trusty hospital bed. Well, why don't I call your car for you? Hey, thanks a lot. Um, hey, listen. Hmm. Don't look so upset, Brenda. I've really enjoyed our little talk. I can't imagine just how much. Wally, Ma, look, before you start, I have had a great evening, so please, no lectures on Atlantic City. Sweetheart, this has nothing to do with your job. Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just defensive lately. Uh, it's all right. You've been working hard lately, and we haven't had a chance to talk in ages. Well, I'm... I understand. Now. Now. You are the last one in the family to know. To know what? Mark and I are going to get married November 15th. Mark Benning, remember my fiancé? Married? Sweetheart, this can't be a shock to you. I mean, we've been talking about it for so long. I was kind of hoping that you might be happy for me. I am happy. But? No, no buts. I guess I... I just thought that life would go on as it always goes on. I'm sorry, Mom. I think it's great. I'm happy. I think it's great. Are you really? Really. I think Mark's a wonderful guy. And I know you're going to have a terrific life together. Yeah. That's what we're planning on. So, are we having a big wedding? Well, medium big. I mean, we're going to have family, friends. And if Mark has his way, we'll have most of the Senate and half of the <laughs> House. <laughs> well, I will mark it November 15th on my calendar. Huh? <laughs> and you and Brenda are going to be an old married couple by then. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's the other thing I want to talk to you about. What's this? 
open it. Your wedding band? Mm -hmm. I want you to have it. And if it's all right with Brenda, I'd like you to give it to her on your wedding day. No, I, I can't take this, Mom. Dad gave this to you. Why'd you, why'd you take that off? Well, sweetheart, you can't wear two wedding bands. Besides, I'd... I'd really be very happy if you and Brenda took it. I mean, it would mean a lot to me. It's like the love that your father and I shared being passed on.